Hey, it's a G and me here, and today's video we're going to talk about what's in our pack. So some of you have been asking, what do you carry for a six-month hiking trip? And so we have laid out on this queen-size bed everything that we'll be carrying with us. Um, at least at the beginning, I'm sure we'll be making some changes along the way as some things we will no longer need and we'll ship home as the weather warms up and probably make some modifications as we go. If you look down in the comments, you'll see a couple of links to our Lighter Pack list. Lighter Pack is a website where you can enter in um, every item and its weight, and it's a great tool to kind of hone in and get that pack weight to where you want it to be. So check, check that out. It's an itemized list by category, gives how many grams everything weighs, and then a nice little donut chart at the top to show you kind of by category where the, um, your heaviest things are. So right now, our pack weights, and we're talking base weight here, so not including food or water, uh, Gunner's right around 15 pounds, and I'm right around 17 and a half pounds for base weight. So we're sitting pretty good. Some people can get it lower, um, but I feel pretty comfortable with where that's at. So the first thing I want to talk about is our big three. And the big three are pack, tent, and the sleeping system. So my pack is a hyper light, uh, don't mess it up, wind runner backpack. Uh, it's made out of Dyneema fabric, which makes it mostly water resistant, almost waterproof, which was a big feature that I like. Uh, comes with some mesh pockets on the front and hip pockets on the hip belt. And then I've added a water bottle sleeve and a little pouch here to put my phone in and um, little things I might need through the day. Now, even though it's mostly waterproof, I do have a trash compactor liner bag inside. I really don't want my stuff to get wet, so I'm gonna take extra precautions. I've heard that the AT rains a lot. No pain, no rain, no main. So I want my stuff dry when I get into camp because I get cold when I get wet. So that is my pack. Now Gunner's pack here, this is a Gossamer Gear Mariposa. Uh, it's one that we already had. And so he's gonna be carrying this pack, a little bit different, uh, not as water resistant. So he also has a track compactor liner inside. Uh, different pocket configuration, but he still has the hip belt pockets and a water bottle sleeve on the shoulder straps. So those are our backpacks. These are both very popular choices for the Appalachian Trail. Our next item was um, one that we also already had. So that's been really nice. A lot of this gear we were able to uh, pull from things that we previously owned. We did add a few items, um, worked really hard at getting good pricing on the things that we needed to add. So our tent is the Big Agnes Tiger Wall two-person ultralight tent. We're gonna split the weight of the tent. So a, an advantage to hiking with another person is that you can split up some of the weight um, in your pack. So Gunner's going to be carrying the tent body. As you see, it's just all a jumble. Um, we're not going to use the stuff sack that it comes with. The tent body will go down into the main compartment of his pack, hopefully keeping it dry. And then he'll also pack noisy, the rain fly. Now the fly is likely going to be wet a lot, so he'll tuck that into one of those outside pockets. If we get some sunshine during the day, we can pull it out and dry it. So those are the tent parts that Gunner will have in his pack. I will be carrying the tent poles, the tent stakes, and the ground cloth. Uh, this just protects the bottom of the floor. We can also do a, a wet weather fast pitch to keep the tent body dry and some different things like that. So that's our tent. Uh, one other thing I was going to mention with Gunner's backpack is uh, he'll be carrying an ultralight pack cover. This is almost like a little rain jacket for his pack. 
Again, because his pack is not as water resistant as mine, uh, we're gonna take this with us and hopefully help keep his things dry. All right, so our sleep system. Uh, we'll start with both of us have a sleeping pad. Now mine is the Sea to Summit um, Women's Ultralight Insulated Pad. It is um, an air-filled pad and very comfortable. I've had this for a while, slept on it many times. Gunner has the Nemo Switchback. It is a closed cell foam pad. Um, super easy to pack up. Uh, if we're stopped during the day, he can grab it off of his pack and use it to sit on or take a nap and uh, real quick. So those are our sleeping pads. The next thing we have are sleeping bag liners. Now we may not need these the entire trip, but these will give us a little extra warmth at the beginning and the end of our trip when the weather is going to be colder. Wouldn't surprise me if we had snow at some point on our trip. So my bag liner gives me about 15 extra degrees. Gunner's is a little heavier. His is about 25 extra degrees. Some people will carry them throughout the whole trip and in the summertime just sleep in the bag liner if it's warm. <laughs> All right, so our sleeping bags. So Gunner's sleeping bag is the Western Mountaineering Summer Light Bag. It's a downfill bag and it's rated for about 35 degrees. So that's why his bag liner is heavier. Now Gunner tends to sleep warm. So we've tested this out and we've slept out on our three season porch down to about 20 degrees and he was able to um, sleep comfortably uh, at that temperature or at least he didn't die. <laughs> Um, my sleeping bag that I'll be taking is a Feathered Friends Swallow. This is my daughter's sleeping bag. Thank you, Kiana. I have the same sleeping bag, but it's like 30 years old and a pound heavier. So I'll be taking her bag. Uh, it's rated for 20 degrees. Now those temperature ratings aren't comfort ratings. They're more survival ratings. So uh, definitely want to be toasty while we're sleeping so we get a good night's rest. So these are our stuff sacks that we're gonna be putting our sleeping bags into. They're dry bags, so should be able to keep uh, our things mostly dry. Along with our sleeping bag will be all of our clothes that we're not gonna be wearing or needing during the day, other than our rain gear, which you wanna keep handy in case a rainstorm comes up. The other thing we'll be using these for is at night, whatever clothes are left in here after we pull out our sleeping bag and, and dress for sleep, uh, that will make our pillow for the night. So these are Sea to Summit dry bags. For clothes, we have quick drying synthetic items. So quick drying t-shirts, quick drying shorts. And this is what we'll wear most of the time on our hike during the day once the weather warms up. Um, and then we have our under layers and um i this is my base layer so we have some base layers i've just got a something i picked up i don't know maybe at walmart and gunner's got a nice little hoodie um pants for the colder temperatures again super fast drying synthetic this pair of pants is not waterproof but water resistant so they dry super, super fast. I'll be taking a pair of leggings, just a, a cheap old Target brand pair of leggings for my backup pants. And we will also carry uh, long underwear bottoms to wear under uh, those water resistant pants or under my rain pants, just for an added layer. And then we have the Melanzana. Um, yeah. So it's just a nice micro fleece hoodie. So it's nice to have hoods on things. So if it gets chilly, you can pull that hood up and keep warm. So that is all of our clothes that we will be carrying for six months. Now for jackets, both of us have some sort of down-ish jacket. Mine's uh, some sort of synthetic down. And it's uh, synthetic because if it gets wet, I don't have to worry about it um, 
taking so long to dry. Yeah. And mine is a down jacket. I've had this one for a while. Um, it's not as light as I would like, but we'll only be carrying it um, on the front end and the end of our trip when the temperatures are cold. So that's that. All right, so next up are our hiking shoes. So a uh, big change over the years that people are no longer wearing boots and have transitioned to trail running shoes. So we both have the Ultra brand shoes. I have the Olympus, what is this one? The Olympus 4 and Gunner has the Lone Peak 6. We've been using these on our practice hikes and kind of just getting used to them. They're both zero drop shoes. So that's a little bit different than what I'm accustomed to. Gunner, we're gonna talk about socks. So for liners, we have these uh, little toe socks. They're not the prettiest things to see on someone's feet, but they keep blisters from coming. And over that, we have a pair of darn tough wool socks. You don't want cotton, cotton absorbs water. So a lot of people swear by this combination of the toe socks with the darn tough to reduce the friction and blisters. So uh, another thing to note is most people say they go through about three to five pair of shoes on the hike. So we'll be replacing these at some point. Don't know if we'll stay with the same shoe. We did buy Gunner a backup pair of the same ones. So Derek can ship those to us. Uh, I've been doing some more research. I might switch them out. I might keep them. The nice thing about the Lone Peak 6 is they have this sort of canvas where the toes are, um, it helps keep water out and... And they dry a lot faster than hiking boots. They also say that a pound on your foot is worth five pounds on your back. So trying to keep our footwear light, but supportive and safe. So we'll also be carrying a backup pair of socks to, to change out and a pair of sleeping socks. So a nice cozy pair of socks to put on our feet at night, especially in the cold temperatures to keep them cozy. Now, one uh, more luxury item that we'll be carrying is camp shoes. I am going to be carrying these Ufos. They're not the prettiest shoe, but I've been struggling with some plantar fasciitis, and these have been great, kind of more recovery type shoes. I could also use them potentially as shower shoes and river crossing shoes if I want, um, but they'll make my feet happy at the end of the day when I'm tired. I have a pair of Hey Dudes. They're really popular right now. I don't know why. And they're really comfortable. They have a hole in the toe, <laughs> which probably needs to be fixed. But these are my camp shoes. Very lightweight, easy to put on for those middle of the night trips. All right, so kind of to finish up our personal gear, um, I'll be taking my Oz Trails baseball cap. Gunner's got his twins cap. Uh, I've got a pair of just lightweight gloves. Again, I get cold easily, so I want something that I can put on my hands uh, to keep them warm. I have just a little micro fleece beanie, melanzana. I could layer this under my hoods. It's not very heavy, lightweight. And then I have a junk brand neck gaiter. Gunner's got just a little fleece neck gaiter that I got several years ago. Um, and so a little extra warmth there. And then I'll be carrying for the warmer temperatures, a junk brand headband. For rain gear, I have a pair or set of frog togs. Um, this is the jacket. It's a lightweight waterproof material. Um, Homemade Wanderlust or Dixie really liked the jacket. It lasted her about a thousand miles, she said. The pants didn't last as long because if she slipped and fell, it normally ripped. So we'll see how long those last. Uh, great, lightweight, affordable option uh, for rain gear. Now, I am going to carry the Outdoor Research Helium jacket. I was going to carry my uh, jacket that I already had, but I noticed it was starting to absorb water, and I found a great deal on, on this jacket. A lot of people love this jacket. Super lightweight, 
it's not really breathable, doesn't have the pit zips and, and all that, but excited to try that out. And then I went with just a cheap pair of frog dog pants. I don't typically wear rain pants, but since I'm not bringing any other pants with me, these might work as in-camp pants. Uh, we'll see how those go. I may end up sending them home, especially in the summertime. So that's all of our clothes. Again, into the stuff sack with the sleeping bag, down into the pack. All right, moving on. Let's talk about our kitchen. So for uh, food, we have these tuppies. The covers mom made herself. Um, the tuppies we bought from a website called Lightsmith. So it's just a nice little plastic lightweight container. We'll be able to rehydrate our dinner meals, our oatmeal. We'll use this to drink hot chocolate or coffee or tea out of. Uh, this is an all-in-one food container. So I uh, used Reflectix to make the, the koozies. And we've been testing them out, and they've been working great. So the thing I want to talk about is our cooking system. So this is the Jet Boil Sumo. Uh, this is new to us. I did a little research and decided that this was a good option for us to take on our trip. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but I think it'll serve us well. Everything we need is stored inside of this uh, pot container. And in one of our other videos, you will uh, see what all comes in, what we've got inside of here. So this is our cooking system. We're not going to really be cooking gourmet meals, just heating up water to rehydrate. So this is a bear bag or a ursac. Mm -hmm. And inside we have a opsac. The opsac is a scent resistant uh, Ziploc bag so we can put our food in there and bears won't want to come and eat it. So there are basically three options for protection uh, of your food from bears or other critters. Uh, there's the bear canister which is a hard sided uh, cylinder. There's the PCT method where you hang your food from a tree and then there's the ursac which is a bear resistant uh, bag. Knowing my personality and uh, how I sleep at night with bears around, I thought the OPSAC or yeah, the ursac was a great option for us. Now, Gunner's bag was empty, but this is uh, filled with five days worth of food. So I wanted you to see kind of what that looked like once food was in it. Uh, there's plenty of room for food. We could even add a little bit more. I weighed this for five days of food. This came in at seven pounds. So we can definitely add some more food if we want to without going over kind of that weight budget of two pounds per day per person. So this is my food bag. Gunner will carry his own food in his pack. And we'll talk more about what's in the food bag in another video. So for Tools, hygiene, and equipment. We have a Nightcore headlamp. Super lightweight, bungee cord to go around, very bright. Uh, we may do some night hiking or early morning hikes before the sun comes up. And, oops. and we have, both of us have a battery. Uh, I have a anchor. Um, I have a USB-C charging port because I have an Android. She is a lady. So this is my bag with all my cords that I need. I have the Nightcore battery, uh, charging cords for my phone and for my watch. And then our headlamps are rechargeable, so we'll use uh, cords to charge that. And then I have some um, Apple headphones that are not wireless. So they have the cord, that way I don't have to worry about charging them, and they're lighter than the wireless uh, AirPods. So, a little bag of that. Uh, Gunner will be carrying our secondary fuel canister, so we'll always have a full one and a partial one, and just kind of rotate those out. All right, next up uh, is our first aid kit. 
So in this little bag is everything that we absolutely would need um, just along the trail. So we've got some ibuprofen, some headache medicine, band-aids, uh, tape for blisters. I've got a backup lighter. We've got some iodine tablets. Uh, dental floss that can work also as uh, thread if we need to sew something up. Uh, things for if our digestive system acts up. So we probably won't be more than three to five days from a town in case of an emergency and we'll be traveling in the bubble, which means there'll be a lot of people around. So we don't have to carry a really big first aid kit. So this should hopefully suffice for our trip and we can resupply as we need with that. Um, another thing I will be carrying is this is a crystal light powder mix container that I stole from the kitchen. And in here is everything I need for my eye care. So I've got my saline solution. I've got a pair of backup contacts, uh, a little cloth to keep my hands clean. I've got a pair of glasses in here, um, but I'm gonna try to wear my contacts on trail. We'll see how it goes. I really don't like to wear my glasses. So that's in my pack. Um, my dad bought me this cool little knife. It's a Rowan uh, ESE training knife. Um, it's small, lightweight, and it looks pretty nice. Very cool. All right, so since I don't have the same sleeping pad as Gunner, I have this cute little sit pad made out of closed cell foam, super lightweight. When we take a break, I can whip it out and uh, just make that rock or log a little more comfortable, keep me from getting a wet backside. And uh, so kind of a luxury item. For hygiene, we have a trowel, cause when you gotta go, you gotta go. Um, we have a toothbrush, and little toothpaste crunchy chew tablets. So we also got these from Lightsmith. I don't know if you can see this, but the handle has holes cut in it. It's a super tiny, lightweight uh, toothbrush. So I didn't cut the handle off. This is how it came. And then, yeah, so the, the toothpaste tablets instead of a tube of toothpaste. Um, we have hand sanitizer and chopstick. We also have a little washcloth for when we take a shower. And then I'll be carrying an extra, this is just a little pop-up brush so I can brush my hair out. And it has a mirror to help me put my contacts in. Um, also, I have this little cork ball. So at the end of the day, when my feet are tired or Gunner's feet, I may share with him, we can use this to massage the bottoms of our feet. Um, again, just a fun little luxury item that doesn't weigh much. We'll see how it goes. Now I'm going to piggyback on Gunner's uh, hygiene. So this is my bathroom bag. I'll go quick through this one. So in my, when I got to go to the bathroom, this is what I'll grab along with a water bottle that is not my drinking bottle. So in my bag, I also have a trowel so I can dig my six inch cap hole. I have this little plastic device, which creates a backcountry bidet. Never used one. Okay, give it a shot. I have a little bandana and then a bottle of Dr. Bronner's soap to clean up afterward. So I'll be grabbing that when I head to the woods. So for filtering water, we have a Sawyer water, uh, Sawyer squeeze water filter and a three liter dirty water bag. We would attach the Sawyer to this little knob here and then squeeze out all the water into our water bottles and then we would drink the water. Yeah, so we'll have uh, the smart water bottles, the one liter size, we'll each carry one on our shoulder straps and so that's what we'll drink from during the day. But to filter, we'll use that bag and then when we come into camp right before, we'll, we'll fill up at the last water source and that way that'll give us three liters of water in camp uh, for whatever we need for cooking, uh, for the next day drinking, and so on. So this is a great little filter. This has been very popular recently instead of the old hand pump ones. So last but not least, I have 
uh, a all weather universal notebook um, with waterproof pages. And um, right in rain, we'll be journaling and kind of recording our, our trip in there. And both of us also have a Appalachian Trail passport for whenever you pass through towns. Some businesses will have a little stamp that you can stamp on to each page. All right, one thing I'll be carrying, uh, this is um, the AWOL guide book. So I purchased two copies. I purchased a bound copy that I'll leave here with Derek so that he has the information that he needs to send us packages. And then this is the loose leaf version that I'll be carrying. This is only the first 500 miles. I didn't want to carry the whole book. So I pulled out what we would need for the beginning of our trip. Um, very, it's a great resource. I love uh, maps and the hard copy. We'll also be using the far up app uh, on our phones, but just in case for whatever reason our phone dies, we don't have uh, some sort of reception, although you can use it on in airplane mode. This will be kind of our backup and they, they have different information in each of them. So this is our guidebook. We don't carry maps um, anymore. This is all you need. Uh, you actually don't even need a compass. So the trail is well marked and if we uh, keep our phones with us, then we should be good. And then one more thing, I will be carrying our trekking poles. Um, been practicing with these and getting used to them on some of our hikes. Gunner's opted to not take his, but I think these will be uh, useful. Help save my knees. So that's the end of our video. Thanks for watching. If you guys have questions, comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.